Let's go to uh, Revelation, Revelation chapter 2 this evening. Over the next few weeks, we'll read through Revelation. Sometimes one chapter, sometimes two, or th even three, I think I've read a couple times. But tonight we'll just read chapter 2. The angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, walketh in the midst of the seven golden candles. Know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and thou canst not bear them which are evil. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and found them liars. Born and has patience, for the same sake has labored and has not. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, that thou hast left thy first. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent. Do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of its place, except thou repent. This thou hast, that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaites, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Know thy works and tribulation and poverty, thou art rich. Know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Hear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried, and shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, I will give thee a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what it saith unto the church, he that overcometh will not be heard of the second death. To the angel of the church in Pergamos write, These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Know thy works, and where thou dwellest, even where Satan's feet is. Thou holdest fast my name, hast not denied my faith, even in those days where an Antipas was a faithful martyr, slain among you, Satan dwelleth. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam. He taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, to keep things sacrificed unto idols, and his fornication. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear, the Spirit saith unto the church that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, give him a white stone, and in stone a new name written, no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. Unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, his feet are like fine brass. I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and patience, and thy works, the last to be more than the Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication, to eat things sacrificed unto idols. I gave her space to repent of her fornication, she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adul adultery with her in, into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death. All the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts. I will give unto every one of you according to your word. Unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatira, many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of faith, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. That which ye have already hold fast till I come. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, him will I give power over the nations. He will rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shiver, even as I received of my father. I will give him the morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear. Hear it saith. Stop reading there. This chapter four of the seven churches. You can see as we read this, uh, there's a spiritual battle going on. It was then, there is now. You see it real starkly here. Uh, we see it in other places. 
wrestle not against flesh and blood, against principalities, against powers, rulers of the darkness of this world, and spiritual wickedness. That's, that's what he's picturing there. God sees behind the scenes. In uh, Peter, he says, be sober, be vigilant, as your adversary, the devil, the roaring lion walketh about. Or in James, this the devil, and he will see from draw nigh to God, and he will draw Right through the scriptures, you see the battle that's going on. If you notice, there, there was two phrases that were repeated, repeated again, well, in chapter 3. One is, he says to every one of them, of thy works. The more I read it, the more I realized he's not necessarily saying, not necessarily complimenting them. He's just saying, I know what's going on. Oh, thy works. The other thing you'll hear with each church is, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith. God is just re-emphasizing it's important to listen to God's word of God. And by the way, when he talks about uh, the angel of the church here and the angel of the church there, um, general consensus seems to be that this is not talking about an angel with wings. This is talking about a messenger from the church. It's not talking about a spirit being. This is talking about a person who's going to take their, this message back to the, to the church. Uh, anyway, that's that kind of What it's saying here when he says, I know your works. We should listen. We need to have an ear to hear. God is saying that he knows what's going on in our life. He knows what's going on. In our life. Giving us instructions that we need to, to listen to. Chapter 2, verse 1, it, it says, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, walketh in the midst of the seven golden candles. Remember chapter 1, he said the seven stars are the seven angels. Seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. God is, is present. He's among us. He knows what's, what's going on. He warns us to prepare for these spiritual battles that face. Looking at these churches, I feel like there's a progression. You're welcome to disagree with me. But he starts off with Ephesus. Some of the, many of the churches he commends. There's some good things that have happened. Stop and think about the church at Ephesus. They'd had the Apostle Paul. They'd had Apollos. They'd had Timothy. <laughs> they'd had some good preaching, you know, and some good leadership. And, uh, you know, he commends them for their labor and their patience. They couldn't bear evil, and they don't follow false apostles. They haven't fainted, and so on. But then he warns them. Really, uh, you think of this as a progression. They've taken the first step toward death end of their church. Reason, one of the reasons I say that, if you go to chapter 3, verse 1, it talks to the church in Sardis, these things saith he that hath the seven spirits of God and the seven stars, know thy works that thou hast a name, that thou livest. Yeah. Come along to, to them, he says, you, everybody thinks you're living When, when Jesus was asked, what's the greatest? What did he say? Of the Lord. So, leaving our first love is a real serious thing. He said, that's, that's the most important commandment. So that, that makes not loving God like we should a real problem, a real sin. Now, Take this as a progression. When, when you're failing in your love to the Lord, there's basically two ways you can go. That's the next two churches, Smyrna and Pergamos. You can, you know, his, his answer to left our first love, he says, remember, repent, repeat. You need to repent. Then, if, if we'll do that, we'll be like Smyrna. Smyrna was the suffering church. It talks about how they were opposed by the synagogue of Satan. Man, that's, that's pretty tough. And there's no um, downside. He doesn't 
have any uh, kind of you know, warning to them. It just commends them. And uh, you know, I believe if we handle this right, we can be like Smyrna. But it may include suffering. Live for the Lord. The Bible says that all that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Or if you, you can handle it like Pergamos. Pergamos is the third one. It's the compromising church. Don't repent, and uh, you, you end up compromising your, your Christian life. He, he talks to them about, what verse? starts in, in verse 12. He talks about in verse 14 how they have the, the doctrine of Balaam. May or may not have the prophet Balaam. The Balak kept wanting to hire him to curse Israel. It's, it's kind of a, a strange passage there. But... The Bible shows us that Balaam had a problem as a prophet. We don't, you don't see it so much in the story as you do later when the Bible explains it. And it's like this church, Pergamos, their compromise was basically, well, you can accept Christ. Just don't worry about it. You can just still live in sin. It can be okay. look, at, look at verse 15. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. And or else I'll come unto thee quickly and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Nicolaitans is, the name means over the people. Different interpretations of this. Some people think that uh, Nicolaitans is just a continuation of Balaam. Which is fine. That, that would be all right. Others think that they go by the meaning of his name, rule over the people. And, uh, I think he's talking about the Churches started having clergy and laity, where the clergy could tell people what to do, leading to you know, some churches where they, they're infallible. Got to believe what they say. Remember, oh, some years ago, a man told me, that's real faith. You just believe what the priest says. You don't read your Bible or anything. You just believe what they say. That's faith. <laughs> what I said at the time, but I would think, no, it's not faith. That's foolishness. Um, Pergamos was a compromising church. That's what, that's what Balaam did to Israel. He couldn't curse them, but he could encourage them to compromise, intermarry, and, and to uh, not follow the, the rules. That... Compromise then leads to what Thyatira is like in verse 18, tolerance of sin. Start to compromise, pretty soon sin just becomes... Okay. Um, uses a word there. Let's see. Twenty. Because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel. Sufferest means to allow, not to, not to restrain. Kind of like what God said about David, Absalom. David had not restrained himself, not taught him as he had should. And in this case, you know, he's talking about women preachers and immorality and so on. As a church, they just got to where sin was just a normal, accepted part. You'd be amazed in our day what so called churches teach believers. incredible. Uh, I believe the, the next step then is. Sardis, where just think about it on a practical level. Church gets to the place where it's compromised, and pretty soon, after time, it'll end up with just people who are lost. Playing. That's they might have structures. I'd have people. There's plenty of churches that are not like that. Starts our heart. It's important that we be right with the Lord. These are real churches. These are not symbolic churches. These were churches that, that had a town and a place, and these were real people. And God gives us some, some warnings. Some are very personal. Chapter 2, verse 2. Talks about how the church at Ephesus tried them which 
say they're apostles and are not. That comes up today, doesn't it? There's people who say, oh, we're an apostle and I have a word from God. We get on YouTube once in a while and I've seen one where the latest message from God. <laughs> well, let me tell you, uh, we need to make sure that we understand who is an apostle, what an apostle is. We don't have modern day apostles. Only in the general sense of a sent one, but not an apostle that uh, we get a word from God from. Gives a, a real warning there. We need to understand when someone comes and says, I, I'm an apostle and I have a word from God, they're a liar. That's, that was. That was something going on even then. Kind of like when someone says, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Uh, the other warning, of course, we already saw is in chapter 2, verse 4, losing our first love. Yeah, it doesn't sound like much, does it? We're so used to things getting a little bit jaded. But God says, this is, this is really important. Another one there is in chapter 2, verse 9. Um, know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not. Or the synagogue of Satan. Again, this is a common. Bible teaching, false Bible teaching that people do today. It's what the Jehovah's Witnesses say. It's what a lot of different groups say. Oh, we're the Jews now. There's a philosophy now where they've set aside Israel. Uh, that where you know, they say, oh, his, you know, God's done with Israel. We're Israel. Exactly what he's talking about. People who distort the word of God, and take the promises for Israel and, and so on and, and change them God talks about the Jews, the Gentiles, and the church. Each one's different, and each one has, has a place in God's word. He talks about the doctrine of Balaam in chapter 2, verse 14. I mentioned that already, how he was, you know, the Bible says here, he fought Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel. That included sacrificing to idols and committing fornication. Pretty, pretty wicked. This is mentioned in two other places. 2 Peter 2.15. Just read this. Talking about people who are ungodly. And he says, who've, which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bosar, who loved the wages, the wages of unrighteousness. That brings it down to money. Wages of unrighteousness. They could include other things. The other place it's mentioned is Jude, verse 11. He mentions several things. He says, Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for reward. There's, there's some things that if you believe them, you're probably not going to be... You know, you're not going to have a big church that pays you a lot of money. Or something. There's people who are just in it for the money. A lot of these last few books in the Bible uh, bring, that, bring that up over and over. Kind of the attitude, the end justifies the means. Heard that expression? Do whatever you want as long as it turns out okay. Well, it, it makes a big difference how we do things. He also talks about the doctrine of the Nicolaitans there in, in 15. I think that's talking about the idea that clergy tells the laity what to do. And, you know, the problem with that, it, it's kind of like our attitude sometimes toward government, it takes away personal responsibility. So, you know, like in war, he told me to shoot all those people. <laughs> you know, and we, we need to be careful that we have a, a right attitude. You have a personal responsibility for what you Churches is important. It's very important. God loves the church. It's the body of Christ and so on. But as an individual, you're a part of the church. And then he talks about, in verse 20, Jezebel. This is an interesting one. I kind of think the actual person's name wasn't Jezebel. But he uses that, that name so we know exactly what, what he's talking about. This was a wicked person who was a Bible teacher. <laughs> and uh, you know, is deceiving people. God says it's not for a woman to lead the church, be the pastor. Uh, leading people to commit fornication and sacrificing things and so on. So God gives us some real strong warnings here of particular things, 
But then also, chapter 2, verse 10, he warns us about tribulation, or general thing. Um, you'll have tribulation. I, I'm not exactly sure what that is, 10 days. Uh, Be thou faithful unto death, and I'll give thee a crown of life. Sounds like a symbolic time, but it might actually be literal. Uh, tribulation will come. Verse already at 2 Timothy 3.12, uh, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus, to live for the Lord, well, it's probably going to happen. The other general thing is chapter 2, verse 13. Satan has power. As they were, Pergamus was in Satan's seat. It was Satan's headquarters. Things going on at that time. Have you ever seen this symbol? What would you associate that with? Medical. <laughs> Snakes and I'm trying to explain the whole thing, but uh, there's a there's a lot of things that are entangled in our culture and, and so on that, that come from things like that. Um, but the the last thing I want us to to look at tonight is each one of these churches. Right at the beginning, he makes a statement about Jesus makes a statement. This is this is his uh, his word. They all refer back to some of the things we read in, in chapter 1. But, for instance, chapter 2, verse 1. These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Read that in chapter 1 already. That's about Jesus. He's inspecting and assessing. That's why he's able to say to each church, I know thy works. He's watching. It's like when the people were putting their money in, in, in at the temple. They're watching, and he saw the, the widow put in her. Uh, you know, he, he knows what's going on in your life. He knows what's going on uh, in our church. And the, the comforting thing of this is that we have his presence. Two words that stuck out to me were, he holdeth, holdeth, and he walketh. He's got a hold of us, <laughs> he's, and he's uh, amongst us. He's, he's with us. We have his presence with the the, the second church, Church of Smyrna, verse 8, says, These things saith the first and the last, which is dead and is alive. That's obviously talking about God. Jesus is God. Over and over in, in Scripture, it, it uses that expression. I'll just read one. They have 44, verse 6. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. This is God, who is also our Savior. There was a song, I couldn't, couldn't remember the name of it today, but one of the lines was, the great creator became my Savior. That's exactly what he's talking about. He says, I'm the, I'm the eternal God, I'm also the one who died. Verse 12, here's an interesting one. Pergamus. These things saith he which hath the sharp sword with two edges. Uh, that sounds a bit threatening. Two edges. You can, you can cut coming and, and going. Hebrews uh, 4.12, you, you probably know that. Let's see, how does that go? There it is. Yeah, word of God. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Physically, a sword can be very sharp. Spiritually, this is this is uh, this is who our Savior is. It there's a, a verse in Revelation 19:15. This is quite a scary chapter. You know, it talks about him. His eyes are as a flame of fire, and he's clothed in a vesture dipped in blood. And then Revelation 19:15. Out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. With it, he should smite the nation. God's word. The word of the Lord. And in a sense, you'd use this two edge in a picture of, you know, it can be used to help, it can be used to judge. There's times when you need the Lord to cut you. There's other times when because you've rejected the Lord, he's, he's going to cut you. Two edged sword. He is the word. Then the last one in this chapter is verse 18 speaks, church in 
he speaks to the church in Thyatira. These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like That talks about God's judgment. God sees. Brass always, always speaks of judgment. There's no hiding. One thing we know, verse 21, says, I gave her space to repent. Patient. God is not hasty. He always right. The thing that impressed me as I looked at this is that Jesus is exactly what I need. Jesus is exactly what we need. He's our ever-present help. He gives life. You know, he's the gospel. He gives us truth, the Bible. And he has the authority and the power to make it all work. These are just the, the first four. So I, I enjoyed uh, spending the, the time studying these, and I hope that you'll take, there's so much more we could, we could look at. This has been a, just a brief look. I want you to see Jesus in, in The Bible says that uh, these churches are the body of Christ. So we want to see, well, what does the Lord command? What does the Lord condemn about? Spend some more time thinking about that and, and your part in that. So, any comments or?